All right, hello everybody. Welcome to 10 Minute Topics on Tuesday. Today we are talking athletes nutrition and I'm joined by a very special guest, Lauren Papanos. Lauren is the clinical nutrition coordinator at UCLA for almost all of their sports and works in particular as the performance dietitian for a number of the teams, including cross country, volleyball, women's basketball, and many others. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I know it's, it's a confusing topic for a lot of people and they want to understand it a little bit better. So first off, tell us why is nutrition so important for young athletes? I think that really starting them out as a young age is really important just to instill those behaviors in them. Um, you know, typically whenever I speak with recruits when they're in high school, a lot of times I pose the question of, have you ever thought about what you eat and how that affects your performance? And nine times out of 10, I get no. They've never, it's never even crossed their minds that what they're putting in their body is actually their fuel source for how they perform. And so I think really the younger that you can start them and that you could start teaching them that food is their fuel and that there's a purpose for it and that it fuels their performance, that it really instills those values and that foundation for them whenever they get to college and they're at a higher level and they really do need to rely on their nutrition. I'm really surprised by that. I mean, this is a great um, interview to be doing then because we reach a lot of parents and hopefully parents with young athletes. I know I'm talking about it constantly. What are the guidelines to eating well before a game? And start with even the night before. Okay. So the one thing that I love teaching athletes is that it's not just about eating healthy, right? That's, that's great. That's a big part of the picture. Um, but really at UCLA, we're trying to target their performance. So I'm trying to teach them what to eat that's healthy at the right times and how that's going to benefit them most. So, you know, we know that whole foods are going to be healthiest for them, that they should have a balanced plate. We teach them about the athlete's plate, which shows them how many grains they should be having in relation to how hard their activity level was. Um, but really, for before a game, we're focusing mostly on those carbohydrates. And the main education tool that I teach them is that those carbohydrates are your direct fuel. So I really like explaining it as a gas tank and that as many carbohydrates as you eat is as much gas as you have. The better gas you put into your body, the better you know performance you're going to have. And so the day before, that's when we really try to focus on having a more carbohydrate heavy lunch, carbohydrate heavy dinner, um, I really like, you know, adding in some salty carbohydrate so sources throughout the day and their snacks. Uh, it's a really good way to just get in some salts and electrolytes in them as well. And then really focusing on their hydration. So typically with our teams that are outdoor sports, so especially with our soccers, we're doing hydration testing with them. Um, we're determining their sweat rate and we're figuring out how much electrolytes do they really need so that they don't cramp they're not losing performance that we know that dehydration impairs um, and then based off that determines how many electrolytes we're recommending for them so for some athletes they may be really heavy sweaters maybe really salty sweaters and they're needing upwards of 3,000 milligrams of sodium the day prior just to be able to keep their water weight on them during a match um, for another athlete who plays the same amount of minutes, they could be a less salty sweater or maybe just not sweat at all. And they maybe don't lose any water weight during a match. And so we really don't need to focus much on the electrolytes. So that's where it gets really individualized with the athlete. That's really fascinating. I mean, mm -hmm. for most of us and our kids, overall, the takeaway I just got was make sure the day before you're hydrating. And salt is interesting. Salt, I didn't really think too much about that before. And mm -hmm. carbohydrates, what are some good examples of, of carbohydrates you would want them to include on the day before? So typically with meals, it's going to be a little bit different than snacks. Um, meals, I also, whenever we have teams that are traveling, I'll work with our chefs and I'll ask them to, you know, add sea salt and seasonings that have salt to their meals that they're eating. Um, but really we're focusing mostly on those heavier starches. So it's going to be your potatoes, your rice, your pastas. Um, I really try to limit anything that's heavy. So when we're looking at like their pastas, I'm looking more for a penne that maybe is dressed with a little bit of butter um, or olive oil, but not so much a um, chicken alfredo because that's just not going to be as good of a fuel source for them to get in those calories. 
And so I really am trying to limit as many of those calories coming from fat sources, like those heavy cheeses, um, because that's going to take place in their stomach from those carbohydrates that we could be using to fill up their energy tank for the next day. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of snacks, that's where I really try to hit it hard with the salty snacks. And so oh, usually it, athletes are very responsive to things like goldfish and pretzels, um, maybe even like some type of healthier granola bars. Um, a lot of our athletes really love power energy bites where you just roll up some oats and honey um, and maybe some protein powder in them. So trying to think of ways that we can get in some salt, but also get in some of those carbohydrates mm -hmm. to interlace them between their meals so that they're just grabbing a little bit more carbohydrates than they normally would. <coughs> and when we're talking about electrolytes and um, drinking a lot of water and hydrating, do you um, use things like Gatorade or is it strictly water or what are some things you might mm -hmm. recommend? So we are a Powerade school, so all of our products that we use are Powerade branded. Um, we do have like coconut water, Powerade, Powerade Zero, um, and that's really determined off the athlete's taste preference, but then also off their electrolyte needs. Um, we do use more concentrated electrolyte sources when needed, so um, Powerade has a, a more concentrated source of powder that they have, um, and then we also use the right stuff, which is really concentrated source that we use for those athletes that are losing greater than 2% of their body's water weight during a match or practice, um, because we know that greater than 2% loss is when we start to see cognitive performance decline, sprint speed, all of these kinds of factors that we don't want to decline during a performance um, but really I try to educate them on if you know you are trying to hydrate you do need the electrolytes because that's how you hydrate the cell so you could drink water all day long but if you don't have any solutes to actually help that water stick to your cell then you're kind of defeating the purpose of drinking so much water because you're not actually really hydrating your body you're just kind of flushing out everything inside and that, and that you mean by, by that, you mean the salt. So that's why you add the salt or you drink the stuff with the extra. Absolutely. Yes. I didn't know mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. so that take us to game day. What yep. do you suggest on that morning? Let's say it's just an afternoon game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think my thought process is a little bit different than some people's on this. Um, what I really like to do is the day prior their lunch. I like to make their heaviest carbohydrate meal of the day um, and then kind of taper things going into the game. And the reason being for that is it helps limit any kind of gastrointestinal distress or like stomach cramping. Um, and if there's any kinds of foods that maybe they're more reactive to than others, we can really eliminate any of those issues happening. So, you know, typically 24 hours prior to that lunch, it would be a heavy carbohydrate source. Their dinner, I say, you know, it needs to have carbohydrates on the plate, but maybe you do rice instead of doing a heavier pasta dish, or you do some potatoes instead of doing mashed potatoes. Just something that's a little bit lighter for them, um, but still has those carbohydrates, th those protein sources. And then moving into the game day, something light. So if it's a sandwich with maybe some like rice or a baked potato on the side, um, sometimes athletes really like doing if they have kind of like a mid afternoon or late morning match or game, then they like doing like oatmeal with toast and eggs. Um, that usually sits pretty well because there's not a lot of things that would cause stomach upset. So just trying to think of one protein source at least for them that isn't a super greasy, very fatty source, and then at least two to three different starch sources that maybe include a fruit and a whole grain that could get them some of those good carbohydrates. Yeah, we haven't talked much about, it's interesting, you haven't mentioned too much about vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. How do they fit into this, this sort of athlete's diet? Absolutely. So obviously, you know, vegetables and fruits, we know are very healthy for them. They're going to provide a lot of vitamins and minerals. Um, but I don't focus on them much around a game. And the reason being for that is that fruits and vegetables should really be your foundation of, you know, what your vitamin and mineral content looks like inside your body. And that's, that's what you should be doing at, you know, all those other weeks leading up to your game. Um, you really shouldn't be focusing much on eating broccoli right before a game because one, it's not going to provide you those carbohydrates that your body needs for fuel. And two, it's going to take space up in your stomach because car uh, vegetables are very fibrous from you being able to eat enough carbohydrates to really fill up those energy stores. So of course, you know, we will have a vegetable source, but 
typically it's going to be something lighter like a salad as opposed to steamed vegetables just because it's a little bit easier to digest. And then what about like if you have multiple games or at a tournament weekend, what do you suggest to keep the energy flowing throughout the day? Yeah, so the big thing there is that we really want to attack it for the energy starts to drain. Um, and the reason for that is once their energy starts to come down, they're starting to deplete those energy reserves, it's really challenging to get their energy levels back up. So the sooner that you can start getting them to drink, sip on some Powerade, um, that you can get them to have maybe some bananas, some honey, um, those are really good options. We use um, a product called Honey Stinger. They have like little chews that you could do, little energy chews. Um, they have energy gels also that are a really good option. So anything that's a really quick acting carbohydrate source, like a banana or a you know pineapple, it doesn't have much skin on the outside where it's not going to cause that gas and bloating in their stomach, is going to be a really good way to just get in some of those carbohydrates and complement the Powerade and those salts that they're also doing. You know, we've been told, and I have a few things I want to see if they're true or helpful or if they're just myths. Mm -hmm. Chocolate milk at the end of a game, if you have another game coming soon, does that fit mm -hmm. well into that list? Yeah, absolutely. So the big thing with chocolate milk is that depending on someone's body weight is going to determine how much protein they need. So for a young athlete, chocolate milk is great. It has a really good amount of those fast acting carbohydrates that you would want after your first game. Um, but it also has a good amount of protein for them. Now, as the athlete starts to mature and we have, you know, 250 pound male athletes that we're working with in the college level, um, 10 grams of protein just isn't going to suffice for the recovery process. It's all based off of their total body weight. So they're looking closer to maybe needing 40 grams, 50 grams of protein in their recovery shake to really be able to get that muscle helping, you know, Re rebuild and get that um, healing process going. So for a youth athlete, chocolate milk would be great. Um, really after a game, going into another one, you really want to focus on having a lot of carbohydrates because if you can think about it, after they're done with that first game, they've already depleted a lot of that energy that they went in with, right? And so the goal should be really trying to attack those carbohydrates as hard as possible in that time frame to be able to get them back up to a full energy tank going into that second game. So I'll focus a little bit on protein, maybe 10, 20 grams, like one chocolate milk or a small sandwich, but I'm really focusing more on on those carbohydrates with them during that time. Lauren, thank you so much. You were so helpful and I learned so much. I really appreciate you taking the time and I hope to have you back one day to talk about this even more. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on the show. All right. Have a good day.